co-founder and CEO of Uven Research, manufacturer of Neil and the company behind E5. So welcome to Modern Healthspan. It's so kind of you to join us today. Thank you. Very kind of you to think of us. Uh -huh. uh, no, thank you. So Akshay, could you provide a little background of your on yourself and what event, what initially got you interested in aging? Yeah, actually it's, uh, my background is actually in finance, private equity. Uh, I've helped large companies set up businesses successfully. I set up one business successfully in technology and I exited that. Uh, but around 12 years ago, uh, my mother, was living with me, she had complications due to diabetes, type two diabetes. Mm -hmm. and, and she heard some medical mm -hmm. events one after the other. First, she got a mild heart attack and then she was hospitalized, but that got done. Uh, you know, we had good doctors. Mm -hmm. Then he suffered a stroke and half her body was permanently paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And we tried but uh, nothing seemed to be working at that time. And uh, that completely broke her. Uh, I mean, any visitor that would come, she would break into tears. It was very traumatic uh, experience. And she was like that for the last five years of her life. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, disturbed me quite a bit. And, uh, mm. you know, till that I was flying high, you know, like all of us in our career, never thinking of death, mortality, disease. But after what I saw, you know, and she was the sweetest little thing and the way she suffered, uh, it, I took a hiatus, I, I took off, like uh, it affected me so much that I stopped all my work and my I paused my career for two years, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Because I was trying to think, I mean, a, a lot of thoughts suddenly entered into my thinking, like about the universe, why are we there? You know, what if it wasn't there? You know, all those kind of uh, started reading philosophy. But mm -hmm. um, when I came out of it, uh, I, I came out of it very angry. I was like, this is not right. I mean, you know, why should anything, uh, you know, suffer? whether it's human or animal or, you know, whatever, why, why should they suffer in a way that my mother did and probably many other people do, uh, you know, and then I started, uh, I, I mean, I, I went back and relied on the skill that had helped me throughout my career, which was research. And mm -hmm. so I started uh, 12 years ago, I started researching on, type 2 diabetes, but in about two years, I realized that aging is the precursor to all of this. And I started researching aging about 10 years back. Uh, all this was, of course, moonlighting. I had a daytime career, uh, you know, mm. uh, and so I used to, I started doing a lot of courses as well. I started studying again. Uh, so my weekends, uh, majority of my weekends would go in either studying or giving exams or assignments. I mean, it, it felt, uh, uh, you know, very funny to everyone around me. Mm -hmm. But I was so motivated, you know, that uh, I just took it all in, uh, you know, stride and continued to research. About uh, five years ago, I realized that, uh, you know, one of the things that is definitely happening with aging is that our repair systems are dialing down, you know, mm -hmm. as we grow older. And uh, I, I started uh, uh, a company uh, with my own money. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, a typical friends and family type of thing. And then I was very fortunate to find uh, our principal investigator, Kavita Singh, and we collaborated with the la uh, with the university, uh, you know, pharmacy college, and we started a lab, and we did some experiments with uh, older rats, where we uh, I had researched some ten uh, 
uh, natural extracts that could safely upregulate some repair pathways mm-hmm. uh, and testing those. And we were getting encouraging results. So it was, it was very exciting. And around that time, I read my co-founder Harold Catcher's paper, uh, you know, on heterochronic plasma exchange. And I thought, whoa, <laughs> you know, this this could be even bigger and uh, more comprehensive. And, uh, you know, I, I really like the line that he mentioned that, you know, plasma phoresis is a safe procedure that's being done, you know, millions of times before. So, you know, this could be something that we can try today. And I was like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> and I reached out to him. He, he was still teaching at uh, University of Maryland, but I asked him, he was kind of semi-retired, but I asked him if he would like to join our company. And uh, I said, we will, you know, fund the research that he wanted to do. And he he said yes, <laughs> to my surprise. And uh, I, I told him that we have to start in Mumbai because I have to keep the costs down. I already have a setup here. Uh, would you mind uh, working out of Mumbai lab? And to my surprise, again, he said yes. And uh, yeah, as the rest is history, as they say, once he came and, you know, we were uh, doing uh, a lot of iteration and research on how to do, how to get the benefit of parabiosis without having to do all the, uh, you know, dirty work. How mm-hmm. to make it easy and powerful. And, uh, of course, we were both surprised, just like anybody else, uh, you know, with the results. They were shocking mm-hmm. right from day one. So we were lucky, as Harold says. Uh, but yeah, that's the history of <laughs> me and why I'm in aging and why is uh, I mean, why Harold and I are in a company together. That's that's the story. Interesting. Yeah, he talks about it in the book, and it like the the parabiosis has been known for a long time it but it was dr catcher who who saw the significance of it um where, absolutely yes where, where the i guess the other people just didn't um so in your lab you were testing something that we could there was called elixir but now it's called e5 so could you talk a little bit about um what is the uh what is the substance that uh, Dr. Catcher is using on the rats? Um, where does it come from? Sure. Yeah, so, I mean, the more I think about this therapeutic, the more astonished I get at what, you know, we have been able to develop. Uh, so, uh, like, I'm like all of you. I mean, I'm also in wonderment. <laughs> so it's not like, uh, you know, uh, I'm showing off anything. I'm just, I'm just amazed, like all of us, you know, are. But uh, yeah, it. So typically, it takes a biotechnology company years and years and years, maybe even decades, before they have a safe drug that can be administered with minimal side effects. In our case, E5 has is is safe for delivery, uh, as we have found out in multiple trials. It's we have had zero events, uh, you know, immunogenic events or any kind of allergic events, uh, despite using cross species. And it is stable in the blood. The therapeutic is stable in the blood. It gets VIP entry into cells and not just the cells, but more importantly, into the nucleus. And it has the ability to make pervasive, uh, you know, changes, uh, extensive changes. transformative changes in the cell, you know, through gene expression, I mean, epigenetic changes, and also the proteome. And the result is that, uh, you know, the cells uh, end up with a younger phenotype, uh, you know, and uh, of course, it has a life to it. So it's not like a permanent change. Unfortunately, it does have a life to it. And there is a peak. And then if there is no further dose given, it kind of, uh, you know, starts reducing its, uh, uh, you know, from the peak uh, mm-hmm. that we see. But, but yeah. Uh, and what does it consist? Uh, I think in our recent 
peer-reviewed paper that was published by GeroScience. We have given out everything. I mean, there's no secrets now. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, plasma uh, derived nanoparticles that include extracellular vesicles and, you know, exosomes and some other nanoparticles. And uh, these carry cargo that is internalized by cells and uh, very readily. It's, it's a very natural process that's happening in our body as we are speaking to each other. And so we are, we are just using the same doorway, uh, you know, and the same mechanism that is going on anyway in our body. But we are replacing the old factors that are circulating in the blood with young factors. And when they are internalized in the cell, they make the changes that would uh, actually happen in a younger body or a younger cell. And uh, so, yeah, we we uh, think uh, it's amazing. I mean, what it ends up doing. And uh, yeah, the question now is only of optimization and of trying to test it in larger mammals and then humans. But yeah, that's yeah. that's what I, yeah. what is he? Yeah. So going back a couple of questions. So you you said uh, there's like a it works for a period and then it kind of goes down. Um, what can you be any more specific? I mean, is the period in days, in hours, in weeks? Yeah. So so uh, no, we have a, a dose uh, performance curve. You know, we we, right. we do know that uh, in at least in rats uh, it peaks between 30 and 45 days after right. injection. So, but, but the improvement starts as soon as you inject, uh, but it peaks around 30 to 45 days. And then if we don't give any further dose, then we see that it sort of starts lowering its benefits. And, and then it kind of plateaus, but that plateau is still higher than what the controls had or what, what it was before for the animal. So there is some benefit that it continues to have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so but that's that's the dose response curve. Do you, have you got any thoughts on whether, so rats have faster metabolism than us, right? It's like 12 times faster or something, something along those lines. Do you think the time would scale with the metabolism speed or not? So this is debatable, uh, even between me and Harold. <laughs> so we joke about this, but yeah, Harold thinks that uh, being humans uh, and much larger mammals than rats, and exactly why you what you mentioned, uh, humans may need a treatment only once every couple of years. Uh, whereas I believe that it may be a much shorter duration. Uh, so we 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 have this debate. The only way to of course find out the answer is by actually doing the you know trials so yeah. we are very excited to uh, do a dog trials soon and a dog is a much larger mammal than a rat mm -hmm. which uh, with a slow metabolism than a rat so that could be a very big hint on uh, for us on what will happen with humans yes so i'll come back to the trials in a second so i have one other question so E5 goes into the cells and, and in your experiment with rats, you looked at a number of different tissues and it seemed to increase, improve uh, the, the biological age across almost all these tissues. In fact, all of them except the brain, I think. You know, do you feel or like what percentage of the overall aging does it reverse? Are there things that even with E5 do not get reversed? if you see what I mean. Uh, yes, uh, I do understand what you're saying. But so percentage wise, uh, it's always very difficult to give a percentage to such mm -hmm. systemic uh, and to answer, I mean, to answer your question, whether there's anything left out, mm -hmm. but I give it a try. So we did uh, approach Steve Horvath, as you know, and mm -hmm. he great service, I believe, to the longevity field 
by allowing us to at least do some level of measurement with regards to what kind of improvements uh, that that are happening, uh, at least at the epigenetic level. And mm. epigene epigene epigenome plays a very very important role, uh, you know, in in the trajectory of our cells and our life uh, and our body. So, so yes, thanks to his clocks, uh, we can put some number. Uh, but uh, even he would agree that that's a general indication mm -hmm. and not uh, something that we can rely on for what we will hope to see in humans and you know mm -hmm. as, as medicine. But uh, but yes, it gives us a lot of confidence. Uh, so in his clocks, we have consistently seen a significant reversal in biological. I, I, I would say biological, but I would say epigenetic hmm. uh, reversal, yeah. age reversal, epigenetic age reversal. And uh, last measurement that we have published in our paper was sixty-seven point four percent. So, so earlier we had a measurement of 54%, mm. but then he added the samples from our experiment, all the samples that he had received, and he did a one more analysis, uh, and those came out to be at 67.4%. So, so that's, that's highly encouraging for us. He wanted to confirm mm. that, and he were searching for another accurate clock for rats and we come came across glyconage mm -hmm. and they have a clock for rats and that also showed more than 50 percent reversal uh in in uh, their clocks so what is fascinating is that both these clocks measure very different parts of our biology you know and yet both the clocks had very similar results. So, so yeah. Uh, what may not be reversed by E5 is difficult to answer right now. You know, I think we are still at early stage with regards to that kind of detailed uh, analysis. Uh, when we have a lot more funding, hopefully we'll be able to accomplish something like that. All of, uh, you know, more comprehensive analysis. Thank you.